in this next function, we see that we have uh, x minus 1 to the third minus 2. So the cube here tells us that we should have a shape that looks like this. So it's just a matter of putting that shape in the right spot. So remembering i hot over, we see that we're going to do the opposite of what we see in here, so that means we're going to go to the right one unit, and the minus 2 on the outside means I'm going to go down two units. So that's where the base point is going to be. Uh, the base point being the guy that was at the origin. So we're going to go to the right one and down two. And just like we've been doing with all of these, you create a new set of axes. So you treat this as though it's your origin. So here's 0, 1, and 2 out from that. You follow the rule, rules for the cubing function. 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is up 8. So it's going to be up here. On the other side, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So it's going to be down 7, 8, somewhere right about here. Now remember for the cubing function, it's just hor it's horizontal right here where that base point is. No, it's not straight across like this but just instantaneously here at this point it is horizontal and so you then use that to help you get the rest of this it's as though you're putting two little half parabolas together that, that may help you get the, the shape a little bit better now understand that it's never straight up and down here it does not go diagonally through these points there's a curve to this alright let's look at number six. Number six is an absolute value function. So we already know that its shape is a V shape like this. Uh, we can see that there's stuff going on on the inside here so I'll do the opposite of that which means I'll go to the left three units. And we got the three-fifths here. Now since three-fifths is between zero and one that means we're going to have a compression ever so slightly, uh, but it'll still be a compression. So we're going to go to the left three to put my vertex. I'm going to treat this as though it's my new origin. And then I get to use the three-fifths. See, I, mean, I, don't, I don't need to worry about the left three anymore. This guy's done. It's about using the three-fifths now. So it means from here, go up three over 5, up 3, over 5. And I can reverse that, go up 3 and to the left, 5. Now I've got a straight edge, so I, I shouldn't have a problem connecting these, but you can also do the midpoint. Instead of going up 3, go up 1.5, and, and go over not 5, but half of that, which is 2.5, so 1, 2, and a half. So up 1.5, over 2.5, up 1.5, over 2.5. It gives you those extra points, makes it a lot easier to line things up. You know, if you have a straight edge or if you don't, it's still good to put as many points there as you can. So we just connect the dots. And there we have it. You can see this guy will be um, just a little bit squattier than the regular uh, absolute value of x. Regular absolute value would have gone up one, over one, and so on, so it would have looked like this. So it would, it would have looked something more like that. So you can definitely see that the three-fifths does have an effect, if ever so slightly, so it is a little bit flatter.